Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me today as we work with micro scraps. Okay, so what is a micro scrap? This is kind of something I made up, I think. I don't know, I just kind of came up with it. What I call a micro scrap is teeny tiny scraps. These particular ones that we're working with today, which let me grab them here, are from a quilt that I made that I use one layer cake. Let me grab it, it fell on the floor. It's this one. And I have a video tutorial on this one. These are all the pieces from when I trimmed up the blocks. Yeah, I saved them. They're tiny, some are really tiny. But I thought, what can I do with these? Aren't they cute? Some of it came from the binding. This is the navy blue that came from the binding. And I just, I have a whole bag of them. So I thought we'd play and see what we can make with these micro scraps. I also have another bag here that I'll probably play with towards the end of the video too and make something bigger because these are a little wider. These came from this quilt. And yes, I have a tutorial on this quilt too. This is a very well-loved quilt. It's been washed a few times. You can see how wonderfully crinkly it is, but it was made with just one layer cake too. And these are the trimmings. But I'm gonna put these aside and we're gonna work with these today. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to make something with these little micro scraps. This is a great project if you've lost your sojo and you just need to get out of that funk because it's a fun project, it's easy, and it's really low cost because it's something you probably would have thrown away or put into a bag for pet beds or something like that because they're so small. Now, of course, we can't make huge projects, but we can put projects together to make bigger projects and I will show you how to do that too. So to make this, you're gonna need micro scraps. If you do not have micro scraps, you can cut them. You can just cut strips of fabric and make teeny tiny strips. That's okay too. You also need some fusible fleece and I cut mine into five, ish inch squares we're going to trim them up that's just because of the size of mine mine are not very long because these came from 10 inch squares if you have longer ones you can make bigger projects or you can even layer them which i'm going to show you later with these you also need a sewing machine and you need some neutral thread you could use any thread though you could really use any thread you can just it, it could just be fun this is totally totally low stress just a lot of fun let's go I forgot to mention that I also use parchment paper. I really, really love these. This is uh, Reynolds Kitchen pre-cut parchment paper. So it's a little fancier, a little more expensive, but what I love about it is there's writing on it and there's also grids and it's flat. So I do need a piece, I don't know, about five-ish inches, a little bigger maybe. We'll go right there. I'll trim that up. That's gonna protect our iron, which will make sense in a minute. And you can see there is writing, so I know that this side is the side that I want towards my iron. And I always want it towards my iron. So if I start flipping it, then the gunk can get on my iron. All right, this is a piece of fusible fleece. So what we're gonna do is layer our pieces on it. And I have my iron heating up over here too. So that's important too. So I'm gonna just dump these out. It's a messy process, but it's also a lot of fun. This was from the binding. I know this is a nice long strip. I'm gonna start kind of in the middle and lay this here. And I'm going to trim as I go. So I want it to cover the entire piece, like string piecing, I don't know if you've ever done that. But I also don't want so many pieces hanging over that it gets to be chaotic. Not that this is not a chaotic project. All right, that one can go right there. So we'll put that there for now. And I'm just pulling from my pile, finding pieces. Now this one's pieced together, that's okay. You can do that. Go lay that there. That one's a little short, so we'll put this over here. And let's see. Oh, here's a nice longer one. And I'm just laying them on here. And you can see there's strings, that's okay. It's gonna just kinda add to the look. If it really bothers you, you can pull them off. There's some threads. Well, here's a nice long piece. That doesn't look like a trimming though, does it? That's okay. Maybe it's just a piece of scrap. You know what, I'm not gonna use that one though because I like the little tiny pieces. All right, so we'll do this. Although I could, I could just cut this. So this piece, all I have to do is fold it up and I can cut it smaller. We can do that. 
personally I like that look but like I said you'll see in a different project in a bit that I use bigger pieces or wider pieces I should say turn this down and at this point I'm going to speed up this video till I cover the whole thing Okay, so I think I got it pretty good. Like I said, it makes a bit of a mess, <laughs> but that's part of the fun, right? So we're gonna take our parchment paper, right side up with the writing, and I'm just gonna lay this right on top, just like that. And I'm gonna make sure that I have all of the fusible fleece covered. And we're just gonna press. You can trim some of these threads if you want to. You don't have to. Again, it's kind of part of the fun having these raw edges. But I'll trim some. So I'm going to let this cool. That little guy doesn't want to stay on there. We're going to press that again. And I like to use this, even though, even though this is all covered, there are a few spots that aren't. I can even throw that in there. I like to use this just because it allows me to make sure that I protect my iron. I see another spot there. I can just cover that up just like that. And what's nice about the parchment paper is I can rub off any of the glue that got on the back side of this. I really like that. I'm at my machine and I have everything fused down as best as possible. A little ragged but that's okay and now we're going to stitch lines going the opposite direction we're just going to do them nice and close together it doesn't have to be perfect you can use any color thread you want it's just a fun way to nail this down so let's do it so i just have my walking foot on i am going to start at this corner and just go down to this corner and kind of start in the middle i also have my stitch length to about three because i am top stitching here we go Know, just the width of the presser foot apart is how far I make them. You can make them closer if you want. So here it is, it's all stitched. If I'm gonna wash it or whatever, I would stitch it um, closer together or make some more stitches in this. But you're just nailing it down. That's really what you're doing, making sure they don't lift up and it just gives you a really cool texture. So let's trim this down, I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so now your block is all sewn down and you can just flip it over. This batting stretches a little bit as you sew it. Not a big deal, we're gonna trim it all down and I'm just gonna take a five inch ruler and I have a rotating mat and just hold it and cut around. You ready? This is so cool. All right, there it is. Oh my goodness. All right, so now I bet you're wondering what we do next and I will show you. Okay, so I have a bunch of these done. Well, a few, I don't know. I have like four or five or something like that. Aren't they cute? So at this point you can treat these just like quilt blocks if you want to, or what I did was to join them. I just did a zigzag stitch. So I butted them up against each other and zigzagged on that seam. Now it is a little too skinny. I think I'm gonna go back and zigzag a little bit wider and closer together just to secure it. But you can see it just makes it nice and flat and a piece. And you can really make some cool designs with these. You can make quilt blocks if you have enough of these, or you could just make a completely scrappy quilt and just keep going with the other projects that you work on. I just happen to not have a ton of these scraps, but if you did, oh my gosh, you could do all kinds of stuff. You could do mug rugs, table runners, zipper pouches, purses, whatever you wanted, because you're basically making fabric. So I'm gonna work on these a little bit more and see what I can come up with, but first, 
and I'll show you at the end. I'll show you what I do end up coming up with at the end. But first I want to make a pillow and I'm gonna use these scraps. They're a little bit wider and I think it's gonna be really cool too. So I'm going to use a big piece of fusible fleece and I don't know the size, but I'll put it up here on the screen. And then I wanna make one of those back pillows like a little tiny pillow, just like that, with these scraps to go with my quilt. So let's do it. Okay, so I have this piece and I'm gonna do the exact same thing and I dump these out. And like I said, they're a little wider, so it's gonna go a little quicker. But what I wanna show you is you can layer these. Where are my scissors? Here they are, okay. You can layer these by simply layering them. Just put them on top of each other. If you did a trimming of blocks, they're probably about the same size and it works really well and you just keep going. So when you're layering, you can layer this way and of course we're layering this way when we're making it the same way. So we're just gonna keep going. I'm gonna speed this up so you can see and just keep adding and adding. Okay, you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I wonder what it would look like if I did it vertically. So I made it like this. Ooh, that could be really cute. You know what, I'm gonna switch gears and we're gonna do that. We're going to layer it this way. So I'm gonna get back to layering and we'll see what we can come up with. All right, don't hate me, but I am gonna go back to the diagonal. I'm not loving this as much as I thought I would. So I'm gonna go to the diagonal, but this is kind of just all part of the process. I don't love that. I like the, the odd diagonal of this, but you can do whatever you'd like. You know, we're gonna pull this away and just start over with some bigger pieces. Okay, because I don't want this to move, put this last piece on here, I'm going to press this side before I work on this side. So I'm gonna grab some parchment and just press this down. I can just see all this moving and me, uh, all this work being uh, for nothing. <laughs> So I'm just gonna keep going with this other side and I'll trim it up just like before and make a pillow out of it. Meet you back here when it's all done. Oh, and sew it too. Right, so I've been working hard. The pillow is finished. Look how cute it is. Oh my goodness. And I did an envelope closure on the back and I do have a tutorial on how to do that. I'll absolutely link it in the description below on my blog, all that wonderful stuff. And look at how it looks so nice with this quilt. I love it. All right, and then my favorite project is this one. You ready? Look at how cute this turned out. I just added borders to it and sewed them on right onto the center piece. And then I kept adding borders and then I added batting, quilted it and finished it just like a regular quilt. And I think it's gonna be a, such a cute little table topper. Look at it when it's like on the diagonal like that. I love this. It's so bright and wonderful and fun. I also made a coaster out of one of the blocks and then when I was cleaning up, I found another block. So I had a couple extra. I thought I'd like the coaster more than I do. I think the raw edge just doesn't do it on the coaster. So I might take this apart and maybe see if I can scrounge up some more fabric and make some more of these because I love this. I think it's so pretty. Okay, it was a lot of fun. This one was a little harder with the bigger pieces. I would stick to smaller pieces if I were gonna do this again, which I probably will because it was fun. The longer pieces kept getting floppy. I ended up having to add some. It just became a little bit of a pain in the neck. But this quilted well. I was a little concerned that the center would be a little thicker, but it, it just a smidge, smidge thicker. You never know unless you knew. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you take some time to sew some of these little itty bitty scraps too, because it's so much fun. And it's nice because you're using up absolutely every part of that layer cake that you're using too, which is so much fun too. I hope you, oh, I forgot to show you the back. Okay, I know people like to see the back, see? It's just the, the fabric from this line. I had extra from when I made the quilt. Love it, love it. So summery and wonderful. Okay, now I'm gonna say goodbye. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.